How did you exact? How did you study? Like, okay, so when and when should when should a student start studying? So the question is basically how so, to start studying and when to start studying. Okay, let me paint a, a picture, a scenario. So you're in your A2. It's currently January. Say so you uh, you have your A levels. I think that starts off end of April. It goes up to May, and then you are. And then I think for students this year because of COVID. Um, they gave their exams in November, June. It was completely messed up because uh, uh, AES didn't happen in June, May, June for everyone. So I think the boat, the situation everyone is in right now is that they have to start studying for their A2 abise, and they have to wrap it up by May. So when should a student start studying? You have you, you like you said there are six textbooks from out of syllabus, <laughs> and a student has A2 on their head. Right. So when should a student start? And on top of that, um, like o-, o levels and A levels does matter. Like it, you can't say it doesn't matter. It does matter heavily in the whole M- um, MDCAT admission process. Ten percent of your grade O level grades plus forty percent of your A level grades make up fifty percent combined with fifty percent of your test mark. That makes up your total aggregate, which makes your merit list. So that is very important. So what should a student do at this point? So I painted the picture for you. Of course. So now, uh, from the perspective of A twos currently studying, and obviously they gave their uh, AS examination in October and got the results recently on the tenth of January, if I'm not wrong. So obviously, like you said, A two on the head. It's A two which is on their head right now, and uh, I would highly recommend that they do not focus on the inter books right now because A levels grade obviously makes forty percent of your aggregate, which is very important. And so I would highly recommend focusing on your A levels solely. And then after you've done your A levels, obviously, for example, uh, my examinations for A levels ended on the 11th of May. I still remember the date specifically. And then I took a break of two weeks, uh, which uh, because I am a really odd person, I procrastinated into uh, one month by playing video games, and then obviously started studying from scratch. Uh, so I had the PMC syllabus. I had the six books for federal board books, uh, and I just utilized those. Chapter by chapter, and went through with it. And I feel like the timeline being ex- so. If we expect the NMD CAT to begin in September, for example, and uh, let's say uh, the A levels and A level examinations end on May, you have sufficient time that you can obviously uh, prepare for your NMD CAT and also have good breaks in between, so that you know we do not, so that they do not have any burnout or any issues at all. So, so I would highly recommend four months. Yes, approximately. So would you would you of which okay, I missed it. So exam ends uh, May, okay, and then uh, I think the PMC in 2021 started off end of August and then it went up to September, right? So four months. Yes, exactly. Four months is sufficient to cover the whole of federal board syllabus. Easily, uh, usually you only need three months, but. Four months, if you can utilize all of them and absolutely perfect and hone on your skills for the NMD CAD, you will ace it. Uh, okay, so let me uh, re-summarize what you just said. So what you just said is, that for anyone in their A twos, January, February, even October, November, jo bhi hai, uh in the future years to who come, whoever watches this, you would advise that they should start studying. They should focus solely on A two and worry about PMC after their CIEs, CAIEs. Is that what you? Is absolutely. That- Absolutely. All right. Okay. So okay. Now let's paint the next picture. So your A2 exam just finished. Okay. You rested for two weeks. You try to not make it one month. You rested for two weeks. And what would you say? What should I, okay? How should a student start? And let's go subject by subject. How should they tackle this beast of an exam, the NMD CAT? Okay. So uh, from the start, I would recommend that uh, you will obviously the A level students, uh, well, all the students for NMD CAD uh, for 2022, they will get their uh, the syllabus by the end of January, inshallah, according to PMC's Facebook live video. Uh, it's on their Facebook page, 
and uh, the chairman i sadly forgot his name he said that inshallah by the end of january you will get the syllabus okay. so uh, when you do get the syllabus i would highly recommend at least just looking at it once and filtering out all the subjects and uh, parts that are there and obviously if you have your federal board books with you i would start re- uh, circling chapters which are in the test and obviously kicking out those which are not going to be in the test because usually they add or subtract chapters so doing that for all the chapters in one day sitting down just having a mindset that okay i really need to start this is good and now uh, according to each subject for biology for example uh, i highly believe in self made notes self made notes so what i did for bi- biology is that i had my uh, federal board book opened so first year, yes self made uh, to me it's the best form of active learning and to, and obviously help me get the score that i alhamdulillah got so uh, i had my federal board book i would simply read through it once just over like overview it what's going on and exact what what i should be focusing on and then uh, i would try and teach myself what's going on and i would write it down on my self notebook and then obviously uh, because this purpose of my notebooks is that i might go for uh, notes that might be online or here and there but at the end of the day the most compressed and compact and certain perfect form of uh, notes are in the ones that you make on your own so that's for biology uh, and obviously chemistry and physics of all of the same self notes uh, system that i made for chemistry i obviously relied on a lot of flow charts because organic chemistry is a huge beast obviously obviously other chapters are included but i was really worried about organic and inorganic so i utilized a lot of flow charts a lot of diagrams and because i'm more of visual learner so doing do, doing that was really helpful and the federal board books all of them had really amazing questions uh end of chapter questions which i used as a uh, topical past paper type uh, assist, uh, type training for myself so just to perfect what i have done and physics uh was pretty great as well uh used the kpk board book for first year and second year for physics again self made notes were utilized and everything was simplified in my book and i did questions uh and obviously like i said i used medangle and their website and there there were amazing topical based questions which showed which questions are high yield or low yield and give me amazing explanations for it so again recommendation uh, for a med angle is uh, that's what i would recommend and the rest is all on you that you should prepare for it uh the other part is that english uh english honestly um for me it was not big of an issue but obviously certain students do uh i think even 2 weeks for english is more than sufficient but i would also recommend that uh, in 2020 pmc released this english uh, word list which they can go back to it's on their website and many words from that specific uh, list came in my examination as well so highly would, i would highly recommend that and then the rest if you really want to practice it like english i would recommend ren and martin uh, it's a really good book but i personally did not use it because i was already fluent in english so i just went with the flow and gave my answers and grammar is a bit difficult but the rest is pretty easy and then we have our logical reasoning now uh, logical reasoning is like uh, puzzles pretty much and logical reasoning can be done on the spot then and there i mean you can get questions online for it yeah and you can solve them just to like train yourself but at the end of the day the logical reasoning questions are best done on the spot with a piece of paper or rough paper and well for the pmc and mdcat instead of having a piece of paper they will give you a white board with some markers and you have to use that and just get through it okay okay so wait let me just basically summarize what you just said so uh bio bio chemistry physics what you would recommend is go chapter by chapter according to the pmc syllabus um what you did was you made your own notes so that you could compress everything you could take the most high yield stuff write it in your own notes so that you don't have to refer to the textbook over and over and at the end of every chapter there are those practice questions and you would definitely recommend doing all those practice questions at the end of every topic for each subject am i right it's absolutely right and along with that practice from your med angle and your anisha sen for these books uh, for these questions as well to further solidify. All right, okay. So another question, um would you uh, are the, uh back in my time, I remember when I gave the NTS in 2015, there were uh past papers, NTS exam it was called the NTS back then. So uh there were past papers for 2014, 13, 12, 11. Uh 
are there past papers available for PMC? Because I uh, I recommend at the end of the day, you should always look at past papers to know okay, what type of what type of questions do these board makes. So are there any past paper mock tests? Uh, yes, absolutely. So uh, you can find these online as well. But the only concern for online papers is that they might have bogus or uh, wrong questions. That's my only concern. But you can obviously, again, uh, Medangle is a good resource to use for this and Anisocent books as well, because they make past papers based on PMC's uh, question bank. Now, sadly, because PMC uh, recently has denied the access to question to past papers, the official past papers to students uh, completely. So they are the tuition centers are relying on students who have already appeared in the tests to convey the questions to them and so that they can make their own list. And uh, Medangle has posted, uh, for example, uh, they have uh, on their topical site. Uh, so this function is called smart sets on the Medangle website. And at the very bottom are the NMDCAT 2021 questions which appeared. And I utilize that as well uh, because it was pretty great and it got me through my uh, MD again pretty nicely. Okay. So, okay. Is there, is, do you think we should add anything else? Do you think, is there anything else you would like to add to this regarding how to study and what to study? For me, I remember back in my time yeah. when I was studying for this, for me, I didn't make notes. For me, I was like, uh, I was a different type of learner. I was like, I would like to read the same thing over and over. Like, ten, I was like repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. And just like you, I did practice all the topical questions. Because like after reading it, that gave you that okay, yeah, this can be asked from this angle. Se sakte hai, and it really, really helped out. So I guess, yeah. So yeah. To, yes, I guess, exactly. Like, yeah. So I feel like making notes or if you like to read or do. But then I feel at the end of the day, the most important thing is to do questions. To do questions to cement your knowledge whether you take notes or whether you read the book a hundred times i think what we both have in common is we both did a lot of questions yes right. absolutely a lot of questions do you agree absolutely i have a hundred percent agree with you uh, of course education and learning is completely personalized people study in different ways mm -hmm. but at the end of the day a common point should be past you present questions so that you can see what would be expected of you in a test yes